Hey there, fellows. I'd imagine you know what this is. Why wouldn't you? It's just a regular old compression tester. This is a rather simple one. Now, we all know about compression ratio, how piston stroke correlates with cylinder diameter and so on, and we all know about compression. And we are super curious to find out what sort of pressure is exerted on the piston while the engine is running. On the pistons, rods, crank, on the entire rotating assembly. And so let's go ahead and try fitting four compression testers, one for each cylinder. Turn the engine over to see what the compression is while the engine is still cold. And then start the engine to see what sort of stress the piston has to deal with. Let's do this. What's the compression on a running engine? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. So we needed to make an additional hole into the combustion chamber, but this wasn't exactly a simple matter. A lot of this space is hollow, because of the cooling for the cylinder head. And so no matter where we drilled, we'd always hit the water jacket. And so we made some plugs. We drilled through the side of the cylinder head in order to access the combustion chambers, and we welded in some plugs. Now the reason this cylinder head is just lying there unfurnished is that we ran into a certain issue. You see, the thing is that while we were welding these plugs in, we scorched a couple of the valve seats. We were unable to grind that out, and so... Hey, at least now we have experience. This didn't work the first time. But we've slightly shifted the orifice, and on the head we're using, there's gonna be more separation from the seat. The welding we did on that one is good. We did everything right this time. Though prior we were experiencing issues. And so one cylinder head will have to be thrown into the recycling. We're not throwing it away, I mean, who knows, we might recast it into something. With this one, we made use of our experience. You will see that we have four plugs going through the water jacket, welded up on one side and on the other where the combustion chamber is located. So we won't have any pressure leaking from the combustion chamber, it'll be right in there. And now let us install the compression testers. These have been slightly... modified. We've made them a bit shorter. And we fitted some adapters to them. And you guessed it. Those we are going to go ahead and uh, screw into these plugs. And our lovely compression testers will be fitted to them after. So this is our setup, but there is something else we had to do. We also had to uh, fabricate this here copper tube, which we still have to finalize, but we've soldered on the bit. You see, the problem is that here the distributor is getting in the way, so we'll have to move this one away, but otherwise everything is ready, so let's commence installation. And once we have all four of them in there, we'll be able to see the compression inside each cylinder. So let's install them and turn the engine over without starting it. Okay, we've got the engine assembled, that's all good. At the moment, we've got the holes plugged with some bolts. And we're gonna start the engine just to check up on it. Okay, the engine runs, that's all good and well. There's oil circulating throughout the engine. And you will notice that it is running a bit rough. Because there are some gases blowing by the threads of those bolts. But no big deal. 
And so let's fit all of the compression testers and uh, get a compression reading for all four cylinders simultaneously. This is gonna be cool. Yeah, time for assembly and from there we'll see what happens. Check out what we got here. We've got all four in there, though one of them we did have to relocate using a tube. Again, because of the distributor. But that shouldn't change much. We are not going to be starting it just yet. We are going to turn it first to see what the compression is for each cylinder. Let her rip. That'll do. Enough, dude. It appears to be... I wanted to say it was uniform, but it really isn't. 1 is 7, 2 is also at 7, 9.5 in number 3, and 9 in number 4. So now we know what the compression is in this engine. And some of the sources that I've seen, uh, they indicate that the pressure that is generated when the mixture ignites, when it explodes, is anywhere between 36 and uh, 60 kilos. We are very curious. There is a lot to consider, but now that we know the compression is going to be higher, I mean to say the pressure is going to be in excess of 16 kilos, and that is the highest number that these manometers are able to show, here's what I suggest we do. We do not want these pressure gauges to fail, so let's go ahead and replace them uh, with a set of manometers that are able to withstand a much higher pressure. Instead of 16 kilos, it'll be 160 or 100, whatever we find. So let's replace them and try starting the engine. Let's go! Okay, so we have installed the manometers. The one on cylinder one is rated at 60 kilos. And the other three are good up to 250. And we got nothing. We're not witnessing anything extraordinary. I guess we were wrong uh, to think we'd see ridiculous readings. Like literally nothing, what's that all about? That is a huge scale, so perhaps nothing uh, extraordinary is even happening, as in the pressure isn't uh, getting up to a huge number. Let's get the 16 kilo gauges back out then. Well, install one of them at least. Yeah, let's see what that does for us. So here's the situation. This was very much to be expected. The relief valves are crapping out on us. You've got these bits falling out of them. The rubber bit was simply sliced, while the spring... It is horribly mangled. Doesn't even look like a spring anymore. That's the pressure. And with how close they're mounted, that's also a high temperature. The only valve that survived is the one in the gauge attached to the tube. So we'd better remove these away from the direct combustion action. I doubt that'll change anything fundamentally in terms of the reading. Yeah, we're gonna have to make some tubes for the other three. And so we've revised our system, we've fitted the gauges to some tubes, and hopefully the valves survive now. Well, time to try this out. Hit it. Ah. 
Not a whole lot of pressure. Amazing, switch it off. I guess we shouldn't have been so apprehensive. These pressure gauges are more than fit to handle all of that stress. The one that's rated at 60 kilos is at least showing us something around 20. But the rest, which are 250 kilos, the needles on those are barely even moving. One of them we've replaced with a regular one that only goes up to 16 kilos. I mean, who knows, perhaps we're assuming that there's much more pressure in there than there actually is. But let's try starting it with this and see what happens. Wait, stop, abort! Stop, dude, stop! That's enough. This one uh, just failed. You may remove it. This one is rated at 25, and so the primary gauges now will be this one and the one that goes up to 50. But we've already seen what the latter displays. Let's see how this one behaves. Look at it jumping around. For real? Right, so when you bring the revs up, it just isn't able to keep up. This one is showing 10. This one isn't showing us anything. This one is at around 5. And this one is no longer showing us anything. You can switch it off. The curious thing is that so the reading was peaking at about 15 kilos. Interesting. But I do think we should play around with the relief valves. They shouldn't be releasing any pressure, instead retaining whatever they absorbed. And so we'll dismantle them, check on the valves, figure out what exactly is wrong with them, reassemble, start the engine, and see what happens. Okay, let's do this. Check this out, guys. We fitted the gauges. One of them terminates at 60, the rest at 25. And the important thing now is, while the valves are still operational, we need to find a way to, well, uh, we won't be able to register the readings, but we'd better try and uh, keep track of the pressure inside the cylinders. Hit it. Okay, this one seems to be mismatched. The show must go on. We doing this? No start already. Five in that one. And even less in here. This one is dead. And these readings have to be erroneous. Give it some gas. One more time. This is tough to fathom. Like, this one isn't moving? What gives? Rev the engine? This is rather suspicious. The tubes get hot immediately, but then this is copper. And right away you can tell that cylinders 1 and 3 are working very well with the tubes having gone blue. As for 2 and 4, those aren't as enthusiastic. We've done yet another round of revisions, and we should be good to go. Let's do some more testing. Oh, there we go. Wait, Sergey, stop! 20, 20, 20, and this one is releasing pressure. Before we completely destroy it, let's rebuild the valve once again. 20 kilos and the engine hasn't even started. Hit it. Oh, 
Stop. Wait a second. The gauges are being twisted out of commission. What is up with that? 20, 25, almost 25. No, I did go up to 25. And on cylinder one, the gauge is about to go for another lap. Why don't we go ahead and switch this up? Get the 60 kilo gauge to cylinder one and put this one right here. Okay, we've replaced the gauges, hit it. Yeah. <laughs> Screw it, let's keep on going. Come on. And now we're getting a clear picture. This one is releasing pressure. And here's where we're at with this whole thing. We have encountered certain difficulties related to the fact that the ball and spring type uh, relief valves aren't cutting it. Apparently this sort of application requires something uh, more heavy duty. More durable with quicker action. Because well, with the pressure readings we're seeing... Yeah, there you go, the needle is slowly creeping back to zero. And so the peak pressure reading, uh, well, these gauges are able to maintain it, while these uh, bounce back slightly. And so at the end of the day, with how these valves work, I mean, they seem simple enough. We customized them, and when they're mounted really close, you can tell by looking at these copper tubes that they were getting hot. And the temperature was rising super fast. And the main point of failure inside these valves uh, was in fact the spring. The heat would contort it and uh, render it completely useless. But with the gases still flowing, the ball was being moved around. It just had nothing to push it back into place. At higher revs, the spring couldn't uh, push the ball back quickly enough. That resulted in the gauge releasing pressure. It was only after startup at idle that we were seeing more or less reasonable figures. An accurate representation of what was happening inside the cylinders. But apparently it's safe to say that, um, yeah, they weren't fooling us. The pressure would indeed be around 30 to 60 kilos. As for this engine, the compression did differ from one cylinder to another, but it looked as if the internal pressure was pretty much the same across the board. We were looking at about 30 kilos. The figures I saw on the internet were between 30 and 60, and we did see 30, but we couldn't get up to 60. And you saw it all for yourselves, this was a really interesting experiment. We measured the pressure, albeit only during startup and at idle. But I mean, that's still something, isn't it? And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment. And that's it for this video. Catch you guys later.